Hello everyone guys welcome to Rasayan Academy once again. So guys this is another video in continuation of the decoding the best questions of TIFR series. Now in this video we are going to talk about some really really important uh, previous year questions of TIFR and we target to do 11 such questions. Okay so 11 MCQs we are going to solve from the TIFR, pre uh, TIFR previous year papers which are on the coordination topic. Okay, so let's move onwards without any delay and before moving onwards guys, let me remind you all that if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do because you're going to get a lot of detailed and descriptive videos uh, just like this one for on many different topics. Alright, so the first question is asking you, this is from TIFR 2020 and from here we are going to move on backwards, that is uh, TIFR 2020, then 29, uh, 19 and then 18. 16 and so onwards right so we are moving backwards chronologically so the first question that we see is a complex of chromium 3 plus in the aqueous HCl was found to exist in two geometric isomeric forms okay a white precipitate was formed on the addition of equimolar amount of AgNO3 solution to the complex the structure of the complex is now first you can try this out by yourself by stopping the video so what are we uh, looking at in the question you are in the options you are having a CL as well as water in the mixture so basically the question is asking you a white precipitate was formed on addition of equimolar amount of AgNO3 solution to the complex right so yeah when we are talking about equimolar mixture that is one mole of the complex right one mole of the chromium 3 plus complex and one mole of AgNO3 that is supposed to give you the precipitate which means we can say that only one mole AgNO3 is required to give you AgCl which means only one AgCl is outside the ionic ionization sphere okay so which means Cl3 is wrong Cl2 is wrong and there is no Cl outside the ring outside the complex so definitely all of these options are wrong so directly you can say that when one mole is required, one mole of AgNO3 is required to do the precipitation, only one Cl should be there in the ionization sphere. So let's also confirm this. Let's also confirm this by looking at whether option number B has geometrical isomers. So yes, this is your chromium Cl2 H2O4 complex like this which means that it can have the cis and trans isomerization yes which are the geometrical isomers so this is your MA2B4 type complex right so definitely it will have cis trans isomerization okay geometrical isomers along with that one AgNO3 required to do the precipitation B is your correct answer a very simple question now moving onwards to TIFR 2019 question that is an isoelectronic series okay so the number of electrons are supposed to be the same in all of these three all the members have intense charge transfer transition okay the incorrect statement is so basically we are having three compounds three complexes all of which are going to show you intense charge transfer transition and hence intense colors so which of these is the incorrect statement regarding this so first of all guys it's a very simple and repeated question in CSI net and gate exam as well so the first thing that you do is find out the oxidation state so vanadium will be present in the plus 5 oxidation state chromium in plus 6 and manganese in plus 7 so how are they isoelectronic they are isoelectronic because all of them are d0 systems okay they don't have any electron in the d orbital and that is why they are solely dependent on the ligand to metal charge transfer transition to give the color now which of them is an incorrect statement let's read out charge transfer transition are attributed to the excitation of electron from the ligand to the metal this is correct because it is LMCT transition this is correct it is it is not incorrect option number B manganate exhibits charge transfer at shortest wavelength so let's check that first whether it is shortest or longest because what happens is when the oxidation state increases from plus 5 of vanadium to plus 6 of chromium to plus 7 of manganese 
<clears throat> the electron yes the oxidation state is increasing and that is why the electron deficiency is increasing so the ease of uh, lmct transition so that is going to be minimum for manganese plus 7 and that is why minimum energy maximum lambda value maximum wavelength because the ease of lmcd transition is maximum in manganese the energy of transition will be minimum and the wavelength will be maximum so the wavelength of transition increase in the order this is a correct one charge on the metal nucleus increases in the order this is also correct one plus five plus six and plus seven okay so both of these are correct which means that this should be incorrect manganate exhibits longest wavelength amongst the three okay so this is your per manganate ion and this is going to be on the longest wavelength and very intense purple color right so moving onwards to next question now this question is based on the clusters SNF5 2 minus and GE94 minus and this complex and this cluster have the structure respectively. Now definitely you are going to have to use the Wade's rule. But Wade's rule, okay, in uh, you know determining the structure is very simple for these two because these are your zintel ions. All right, so these are your zintel ions, and zintel ions use the formula 4n plus 2 uses closo structure, 4n plus 4 electron count uses nido structure, and 4n plus 6 that is for the arachno structure. All right, and when we are looking at this complex, now this is your higher nuclearity carbonyl cluster. And that is why what you have to do is you have to follow the different method of polyhedral electron count. Okay, so let's uh, just find the, all of them. First of all, for the tin SN5 to minus, if you count the electrons, it will be 4 electrons per tin because tin is there in the group 14. So it will have 4 valence electrons. So 4 into 5 because there are 5 metal plus 2. So the plus 2 is coming because of the 2 negative charge over here. Now, if you closely see, this is already in the format of 4n plus 2, where n is the number of metal. Okay, so this is already closer. Same goes for GE92 minus. Now, GE germanium is there in the same group 14. So, this is going to be 4 electrons multiplied by 9 metal plus 2. So, it is also already in the same format. Okay, as you can, uh, sorry, there's 4 minus, right? So this is going to be 4 minus plus 4, that is. And this is in the format 4n plus 4, which represents Nido. So first one is Closo, second one is Nido. What about the third one? The third one, Rhodium. Uh, this is 16. So this is going to have how many total electron you can count. 54 9 electrons on rhodium so 54 plus 32 it is going to have a total of 86 electrons okay but we are going to do the polyhedral electron count minus 12 into n divide by 2 that gives us the skeleton electron pair that gives us the skeletal electron pair of the complex and that is going to be 86 minus 12 into 6 because there are 6 uh, rhodium over here divide by 2. Alright, so that gives you 14 divided by 2, 7. So the value is going to come out to be 7. Now 7 falls under the category n plus 1 where n is the number of metal and the metal was 6 over here, right? n value was 6 over here. So when you follow the n plus 1 rule, this is going to be closer according to the Wade's rule n plus 2 is going to be Nido n plus 3 is going to be Arachno and so on and so forth right so this is going to be Closo, Nido and Closo structure for all of these three all right 
so it's a bit of a organometallic question but uh, since all of these are very mixed uh, uh, you know asked in a mixed manner you can consider this as a question which is asked in asked for main group also for boranes for zintalines as as well as for the organometallic so this is a mixed question now next question is identify the high spin complex among the choices given below so high spin complex you have to find out first of all now guys cobalt in the 3 plus oxidation state that usually shows you low spin complexes okay but with whom starting with water ammonia and obviously all the other higher uh, you know ligands the, the, or the other strong field ligands like cyanide so ammonia and cyanide these are going to be your low spin complexes however fluoride is not as uh, a strong so this is still going to be a high spin complex right so cobalt 3 plus is b6 high spin over here All right, this is going to be like so. C is your correct answer. Easy question. Moving onwards to another one. Give the molecular formula of the hexa coordinated species. Okay, given the molecular formula. So there is one, two, and three. Three formulas are given to you. If the number of coordinated ammonia molecule in one, two, and three respectively are six, five, and four, then the oxidation state of cobalt in all of these complexes respectively is. So this is a very tricky and simple question at the same time because, see, uh, <clears throat> the question is asking you that if in this complex you are having six of the amines coordinated, which means Cl3 is going to be outside. Here you are having only five, like this. Okay. So this is going to be the formula, and here you are having four ammonia, which means Cl2 inside and one Cl outside. So what is the oxidation state of cobalt? See, it could have asked coordination number, but oxidation state is like super easy because in all of these three cases. You see that there are still three chlorides sticking to the uh, cobalt, whether in the ionization sphere or in the coordination sphere, right? So in all the cases, there is also cobalt plus three. There is also cobalt plus three, and there is also cobalt plus. Three. In all of these, cobalt is there in the plus three oxidation state. So D has to be the correct answer. All right? Yes. Moving onwards, the complex showing a spin-only magnetic moment of 2.82 Bohr magneton is. So spin only we are considering no orbital contribution. So that's going to be an easy question. Now first of all, nickel over here is a D10 system because nickel has zero oxidation state. Secondly, in option number B, Nickel is a D8 system because it is plus 2, but whether it is going to be tetrahedral or square planar, you can simply see that it's not a strong field ligand, it's going to be tetrahedral. Both of these complexes are D8 square planar. Okay, so both of these complexes are going to be D8 square planar, and that is why you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is going to be diamagnetic. Okay. And as well as D10 system is also diamagnetic. So option number B is going to be D8 tetrahedral. And the splitting goes like this. 8. So there are only 2 electrons. And we are not considering the orbital contribution. Even though there is degeneracy in the T2 system. But still, we are not considering it. So, 2.82 corresponds to 2 unpaired electrons. And that is correct. So, B is your correct answer. Alright, another year question is, for cobalt, in the oxidation state 2. Alright, so cobalt is already given that it's going to be in oxidation state 2. Predicts the, uh, predict the overall charges. 
of the coordination complex shown in the reactions below. So basically you see different complexes of cobalt and what is asked to you x, y and z value. So first of all guys if you want you can just write the complex in a simple format. Here you see cobalt is a hexa aqua complex. Now if the cobalt is given to be in the oxidation state plus 2 then definitely since water is neutral 2 plus is going to be outside. So x has to be plus 2 isn't it? Yes. If you are replacing the water molecules like this and if the cobalt is still there in plus 2 because only it's a substitution reaction no oxidation or reduction. So the residual charge on the complex is going to be 2 minus. So y is going to be minus 2 plus all the aqua ligands replaced. Similarly, if you are uh, having a base, now base is going to replace two of the water molecules as you can see. So this is your complex. Now cobalt was there in the plus two oxidation state. Now you have two anionic ligands. So the charge should be zero. So Z is going to be zero. So your answer is x is plus 2, y is minus 2 and z is 0. This is your answer for this question. Very simple question guys. Now moving on to the next question. It's a very very important question guys. The acidity of molecules is usually measured by a parameter called the pKa. Metal ions Mn plus like this solubilized in water form solvated aqua complexes commonly denoted by this formula where usually the m is uh, whole 6 because the coordination number is whole 6 or m aqueous n plus so n plus is the charge it is known that known that the pka of coordinated water in such a metal aqua complex will be different from the bulk of water basically it means that water as a free molecule will have a different acidity as compared to water which is uh, connected to a molecule to connected to a metal like this definitely it will have different acidity because the bond is going to be polarized okay but how much polarized and in which case so the following set of metal aqua complexes given over here Arrange the complex with decreasing value of expected pKa. So this is difficult. Decreasing order. This is your decreasing order. That is the greatest pKa is going to be the first one. So we will write highest pKa in the first position. Guys highest pKa means least acidity isn't it? Yes. So highest pKa value is going to be for that one which has the least acidity. So first of all red, let's write the correct acidity order. Acidity is going to depend on the charge density of the metal. Iron 3 plus has the maximum charge over here. Okay. Then comes iron 2 plus small size. Okay. And smaller size with respect to manganese 2 plus and calcium 2 plus is going to be the largest size and also it is it is basic in nature it's not acidic right so that is why what happens is the charge density is higher and that is why the polarization is greater so this is how it goes here we compare with the charge density here we compare with the size and here also we compare with the electronegativity as well as the size because the size is going to be very small for manganese as compared to calcium. If this is the acidity order, the pKa order is going to be just the reverse one. Right? So B is your correct answer. Calcium 2 plus aqueous, less acidic than manganese, then iron, then Fe3 plus. Okay? This is your correct pKa order. Questions like these have been asked in the CSI and NET examinations as well. Okay. Alright guys. And if you want to study the coordination chapter in detail. 
um you can join an academy plus as well because there we have had done the complete course regarding uh, also doing the question uh, reaction mechanism as well just like this one so the question is asking you predict the products of the following reaction in the first case you have a platinum complex which is square planar but here the ligands are all phosphine so the platinum must be in the 2 plus oxidation state now when one of the cl minus is added let's say one of the phosphine got replaced yes guys you can definitely try this out by yourself because this is a super easy question all right this is what you have now this was easy just replaced one phosphine the second part is difficult you are replacing one more phosphine but where is that going to be so guys phosphine okay phosphine has a greater trans effect as compared to cl minus which means that this phosphine or this phosphine can labelize each other and rather they would give you a cis compound as compared to a trans one so this is your neutral molecule now in the in the uh, molecule x you have formed the cis compound and the question is based on the trans effect all right similarly for ptcl42 minus now when you have added one mole of pph3 it is going to look like the same intermediate that we have got in the first reaction just that yes uh, sorry just that you have cl all over so sorry this is going to be cl 3 cl and 1 phosphine will be the intermediate over here now the phosphine is going to definitely remove the trans cl minus and the product is going to be trans why because the because of the same reason that the trans effect of phosphine is much greater right so it's going to be much greater as compared to the cl so your answer should be trans so x is going to be cis and y is going to be trans this is your correct answer option number b okay yes moving onwards to another good question guys again the question is uh, based on a statement so which statement is true of the ground state of cobalt 2 plus ion so cobalt 2 plus ion could be high spin or low spin but it is a d7 system right it is a d7 system like this i have drawn a high spin one ground state of cobalt 2 plus number of unpaired electron is zero now this is not possible on the ground state of cobalt 2 plus we cannot just have it in the low spin state even if you are having the low spin cobalt 2 plus it is still going to be paramagnetic because of one electron so electrons is zero not possible both a and b are wrong the number of unpaired electrons is 3 so yes as we can see in the high spin state it is showing to be 3 all right and the cobalt 2 plus is non a is paramagnetic so this seems to be correct the second one is same over here is not paramagnetic so this is wrong C is your correct answer because cobalt 2 plus D7 is going to be paramagnetic in your ground state with three unpaired electrons. Very simple question. Now comes the question uh, on on the uh, term symbols. So what terms can arise from the configuration 2p1, 3p1? Now this is a very 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 important question. and as you can see the excited form has been taken which means that if you are uh, let's say drawing the 2p configuration and the 3p configuration they are going to be one in one like this so what are all the different possibilities that can get you a term symbol let's say let's say that your electrons are occupied 
with parallel spins into the plus one of the term of the orbital right so l value the total l value that is the summation of the small l's that is going to be equals to plus one plus one is equals to two and when the l value is two it gives you the d term right we are taking the maximum value first it gives you the d term now guys for the d term here the 2s plus 1 value should be 3 because two of these electrons are in the parallel spin so it should be a 3 value which means it is tri uh, triplet so 3d term could arise from here but similarly what else can i have i can have the same orientation but the opposite spin so the l value is still coming out to be 2 you are still having the d system but since the spins are opposite so 2s plus 1 value is only 1 because the s value is 0 right so here you can have the 1d term similarly the other possibility is you can have one electron in the plus 1 another electron in the 0 level all right because all of these are degenerate it could exist anywhere l is equals to only one you get the p term and since both of these are uh, uh, parallel spins it's going to be the 3p term because the 2s plus 1 value is equals to 3 now guys the same possibility arises over here also that it could be in the opposite spin and then it could give you 1p because the spin is going to cancel out similarly one more possibility that your electron is there in plus 1 0 minus 1 and this is your 3p system plus 1 0 minus 1 so let's say the electron has moved to minus 1 so the l value is going to be 0 because plus 1 minus 1 cancels so in that scenario you are going to have the s term now in the first case both of the electrons are unpaired parallel so this is going to be 2s plus 1 3 so you're going to get the 3s term in the next possibility you are going to have the 1s term why because it could exist like this as well as like this both of these possibilities are there so the answer should be option number a that what terms can arise so what are the different possible terms it is asking you so we have found out all the possible term symbols uh, ground state terms for this uh, configuration so basically this is not a ground state this is an excited state so we have found out the terms for the excited state only all right that is why it is so elaborate over here answer is option number a now guys I have uh, discussed a lot of good questions, 11 good questions from the TIFR paper on coordination. And if you are liking the video, then please spread it and share it with your friends, guys. It's, it's super important, all of these questions. And they have been repeated in CSI Net and GATE as well. So they might help you in cracking those exams. Also, if you are uh, looking for complete course on coordination, complete detailed course on coordination, you can join an Academy Plus for detailed courses. And yes, don't forget to use the code JAGDITS for a 10% discount. And always stay updated about the new offers which are going on on an academy. I share them in the community post or as a video, guys. All right, so you can get more benefit out of that. All right, so I'll see you in another video. Till then, keep practicing. Bye, everyone.